I'm excited to share with you a cool question, which is easy to understand, but which doesn't have an obvious answer. You're presented with the 2x3 matrix. This matrix has arrows inside. There are two types of arrows, solid arrows, and then there are arrows that consist of three different shapes. There are six possible spaces in the 2x3 matrix. Five shapes are present, and one shape is missing. You're presented with four different choices to identify the missing shape, which is highlighted by the question mark. You have choices A, B, C, and D. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can identify the right answer. Did you figure out the correct answer? Let's continue to see if we can get to the correct solution together. To solve these types of challenges, you always need to look for patterns. And there are three different patterns present in the sequence. Let's look at the pattern one. If we start from the upper left corner and go clockwise, you see that the arrows change alternatively in each subsequent box. Second pattern is that inside the box, solid arrows rotate clockwise. And then the third pattern, which is a little harder to identify, is that the previous arrow points to the next arrow start. This is why the missing part, the part that you would need to identify, contains an arrow placed in the right corner pointing to the left. So the correct answer here is choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. But in case you need more problems and solutions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. This is one of my favorite questions, and there is a very high chance that you will get it on the assessment test. How many triangles do you see? You're presented with the shape on the left. There is a large triangles, and there are also lines inside of this large triangles. You have four different choices. Choice A, nine triangles. Choice B, 12. Choice C, 17. And choice D, 24. One triangle is highlighted in red, but there are a lot of other triangles. Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself a few seconds. I would recommend 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you will get in the real test. You can pause this video to give yourself some time to figure out the answer. I am going to continue and reveal the correct solution so we can get to the answer together. I counted 12 triangles in this picture. Is this what you got too? Let me show them all for you. I'll start with the smaller triangles and then go to the medium-sized ones and then go to the large ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Did you come up with the different answer? Please share your thought process in the comment section of this video so we can all learn from your perspective. Hopefully you nailed this question and got to the correct answer on your own. The types of questions you're looking at is very frequently used on a test. Typically, you're being asked to determine the item which does not belong to the group. And you're presented with multiple items. In our choice, we have choices A, B, C, and D. Each item is represented as a square which contains multiple different items inside. And you need to determine the item which does not belong to this particular pattern or sequence. Do you see the answer? Please take a look to see if you can come up with the solution. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds, maybe 10 to 20 seconds, to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? Let's continue to see how we can go and get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured out by now, there is always a pattern that you need to detect to answer these types of questions correctly. And a lot of times, there are items that are designed to confuse you. So let me first walk you through the items that are designed to confuse you. You have small circles, and there are four small circles in each of the square. And the small circles do not have any patterns. We also have triangles. Some squares have two triangles, and some squares only have one, but there is no pattern here. The pattern is actually defined by the half circle. And as you can see, all half circles are attached to the corners of the square. You see this in the shapes A, 
B and C. But in shape D, half circle is placed in a different location. It is in the bottom middle of the square. This is why the item that doesn't belong to the group is the choice D. So the correct answer here is choice D. Let's recap. The pattern here is that all half circles are attached to the corners of the square. But half circle in the shape D is placed in a different place than the others. The half circle there is in the lower part of the square. This is why the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the challenging question you might frequently see on the test. What is the smallest non-negative number that can be described with unique letters? You might have to reread this question multiple times just to understand what is being asked. Let me help you. If we are to clarify this question, you are being asked to describe the number with the letters. And those letters should be unique. For example, in word 20, there are two letters T. So 20 is not the word that can be used in the test. On the other hand, so which means that 20 is not the word that meets the criteria because it has duplicate letters. On the other hand, word 10 contains all unique letters. So the question is, what is the smallest non-negative number that can be described with unique letters? A lot of times people get the answer 1, and this might be true because 1 is the positive and all letters are unique. But the actual answer to this question is 0, because 0 is neither positive nor negative number, but can definitely be considered as a non-negative number. So the correct answer here is 0. Did you figure it out? Please share your thoughts and the way you approach this question in the comment section of this video. I'm very excited to share with you this question which we frequently see on the test. Despite being tricky, you will have a lot of fun trying to find the answer. This is one of those questions that is easy to understand and it challenges your brain and improves your IQ. It also tests your imagination, spatial thinking, logical thinking and attention to details. Take a look at the picture and see how many squares do you see. Think again. The answer might be more challenging than you think. Now might be the good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Give yourself about 10 seconds. This is typically how much you will get on the real test. Do you know the answer? Let me give you a tip. Keep in mind though that on the real test most of the time you don't get any tips. But since we're doing it together, I'd like you to consider the possibility of one shape being inside the other. Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. There are 14 squares that can be identified in this picture. This definitely came as a big surprise to me. Do you see them all? Some of them might be much easier to identify than others. Let me draw them for you. There are nine small squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Even though small squares are easy to see and identify, let's look at the medium sized squares. There are four of them. Number 10, number 11, number 12, and number 13. And then there is one large square. This is number 14. What do you think about this challenge? Were you able to solve it right away? In case you see some additional shapes that we missed, which is always a possibility, please make sure to share them in the comments of this video. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is a frequent question on the test that a lot of people get wrong. It took 10 hours to complete project 1. For project 2, it took 17 hours. What is the percentage increase between two projects? You are presented with four different choices. Choice A, 7%. Choice B, 17%. Choice C, 70% and then choice D, 170%. Take a close look to see if you can calculate and come up with the right answer. You can pause this video and give yourself a little bit of time
to better understand what is being asked. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can figure out and get to the correct solution together. To calculate percentage increase, you need to do the calculations. First, you need to determine the increase in hours. To do that, you need to subtract project 2 hours from project 1 hours. To do this, you need to do 17 minus 10 and the result would be equal to 7 hours. This represents the increase in hours between two projects. In the next step, you need to divide the increase by original hours. Since original hours were 10 hours and increases 7 hours, what you need to do, you need to divide 7 by 10. And as a last step, you need to multiply it by 100%. You can do the calculations in your head, or if you use a calculator, you will come up with the same result, which would be 70%. So the correct answer here is the increase was 70%, and the correct choice here is choice C. Did you figure out the correct answer? Please share your thought process in the comment section of this video so we all can learn. And if you need more similar problems to practice for aptitude test, please make sure to check out my ebook in the comment section of this video. I'm extremely excited to share with you the question that tests your pattern recognition skills. You're presented with three columns. Each column has three numbers. In the first column, we see numbers 2, 7, 5. In the second, middle column, we see numbers 2, 3, and 4. And in the last, rightmost column, column number 3, we see numbers 10, 21, and then one number missing. You need to find the missing value, which is highlighted by question mark. You need to find the missing value, and you have four choices to choose from. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 16. Choice C, 27 and choice D, 36. Do you think you can recognize missing value? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. The most important skill to solve these types of problems is pattern recognition skill. To recognize the pattern, you need to look closely into each column. Selective values in columns 1 and 2, by multiplication, get to the value in column 3. And this is our pattern. Let's take a closer look for the values that are already present. If we multiply 5 by 2, we get to the value of 10. Second set of values represented by the middle row. 7 multiplied by 3 equals 21. So the missing values here can be calculated by multiplying 2 by 4 and the end result would be equal to 8. So the correct answer to this problem is choice A, 8. I also wanted to share with you one of the typical mistakes people make as part of answering these types of questions. People start looking at the columns themselves. But unfortunately, there is no pattern just by looking in the values in column 1, since pattern just doesn't exist. If you look only at the values in column 1, or only at the values in column 2, or only at the values in column 3, you will not be able to come up with the answer. You have to look across and take a global view across multiple columns to get to the correct solution. Can you do me a favor? If you have a better way of solving this challenge, please share your thought process in the comment section of this video. Here's the interesting question that might get you puzzled. You need to explain why the calculation that you see is correct. And you have a calculation 1 plus 1 equals 10. Give yourself 10 seconds and let me give you a hint. Try to think out of the box and try to see what else can be going on here besides just the calculations. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Typically, when we do calculations, we use 10 digits in the decimal system. We use 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. But here, calculations are done in the binary system. And there are only two digits in the binary system, 1 and 0. So what happens when you get calculation in the binary system and you add 1 plus 1, what looks 10 in the decimal system looks like 2 in the binary system. So the correct answer, this calculation is possible because of the binary system. 
Let me demonstrate this to you. If you launch calculator in Windows and then switch to the programmer calculator, you can choose different systems. By default, it's a decimal system. But if we switch to binary, and then we can add 1 plus 1 equals what looks like 10 in reality is 2 in the binary system. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I gotta tell you, I love this question. This is such a unique question and we see a lot of variations of this question on the test. In this particular version, you are presented with the 4 by 3 matrix of squares. And then you see two additional squares on top of the medium-sized squares. And the question is, how many squares do you see on the picture? Take a closer look and give yourself a little bit of time to find out the answer. Feel free to pause this video if you need more time. Do you have the answer? Let's continue to see if we can come up with the solution together. As you might have figured out, there is a total of 30 squares shown in this picture. Let's start by removing overlapping squares and counting medium-sized squares. There are 12 of them in this picture. Let me count them all for you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Once we reintroduce overlapping squares, we can count them as well. They would have numbers 13 and 14. Two overlapping squares introduce eight small squares. They would have numbers 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. There are also six large squares. Let's give them a numbers. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. As you can see, those large squares are located in the top row as well as in the bottom row. And last but not least are two extra large squares. I gave them the numbers 29 and 30. Were you able to solve this challenge on your own? Did you get to the right answer? Or maybe we missed some of the squares? Feel free to share this information in comments and I hope this question was nailed by you and now you know how to answer similar questions on the test. I had this question being asked as part of consulting job interview. How many seconds are there in a year? Take a look at the picture. It might give you a hint. Do you think you know the answer? Think of the logic. How would you calculate how many seconds are there in the year? Or maybe there is an alternative. Always try to think out of the box. This would be my hint to you. And give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. This is as much time as you might get answering these types of questions in the test. Now let's continue and get to the correct solution together. Obviously, this is a tricky question and it challenges you in understanding of the word second. There are two meanings in the word second. One is second, for example, one minute has 60 seconds. But second one is second, where you have sequence of first and second. And the second meaning of the second is used in this particular question. So if we go back to the question, in the year there are 12 months and there are 12 second days. One second day in each month. January 2nd, February 2nd, March 2nd, and etc. Hopefully you've nailed this question. It gives you some laugh and you now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for your endorsement, support, and patronage. Please also check out additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net. Please leave your feedback, corrections, or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.